Hello, welcome back to EMTV Ryan. I'm EMTV Ryan. Thank you very much for joining me. So today is a bit of a different one. I went through some old GoPro footage. I found a time that was probably the hardest ride of my life. This is November last year. I had a chest infection. It was a ride that just went wrong from the start kind of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some of the footage up. What I will say is it was minus 5 when I went through Belgium that day, which is right near Kielder. So we turned what should have been a 20, 20 odd kilometre hour ride, nearly doubled it. In fact, a bit more than doubled it, I believe. We turned what should have been Kielder's famous Red Trail Bloody Bush. We took a wrong turn at the Bloody Bush Stone. We ended up going across borders, which took us into Newcastleton, which extended our journey by so by some amount. So we left, we were packed, we were ready, we were happy days, we got there at about 8 in the morning and yeah we were all set for about a 20 kilometre ride which obviously you look at how much water you're going to need, you try and keep the water down to a minimum to try and obviously save a bit of weight as well. We obviously had me and me and my friend Kev, we have e-bikes so we had battery to remember so yeah, it was it was tough from the start. The cold's already tough on the batteries. The cold will drain the battery very quickly, as as I found. So when we headed off, we kind of expected it to be the normal size ride, the twenty miles or twenty kilometers, and we used boost from the start just for a bit of fun. We used we used every setting you probably shouldn't use to try and conserve battery. We did everything the opposite way around. We tried to hammer it, tried to have fun, which came a bite us at the end. So as you can see, that's a picture of the bike at the Bloody Bush Monument. It was very nice view. You can see the ground's a little bit frosty there. It was it was really cold. Uh, you can hear my breathing that I'm not too well. Let's see, the chest infection I had made biking very difficult. It felt like my chest was on fire, which probably isn't a good time to go biking. I've learned that now. There's the North Shore. So this leads up to the Bloody Bush Trail and the Lonesome Pine Trail. To get there is a bit of a climb, but it's really enjoyable. So yeah, so where we're getting to here, if you go right, you go to Lonesome Pine. If you go left, you go to Bloody Bush, which is the one we're going for. The views are fantastic as well. You I wish I could get a better look, but if you stopped on this, you wouldn't get started because the North Shore was really slippy, had a really, really strong layer of frost on it. Where if you did try and slow down or, or pull your brake a bit too hard, you'd oh, probably fantastic. slide straight off. Not as windy as I was expecting. I was expecting it to be quite windy. Because I know it's been a lot colder today. It was like, it'll say it was about minus five when I went to Belgium. Having the brakes a little bit. So I'll just explain how I'm using my brakes there. I'm kind of feathering them. I'm not wanting to grab them. If I grab them, I will slide. So if I just feather them, that's what I kind of what it looks like. Depending on the brakes you've got, I tend to use two fingers just because my brakes. I should really use just one finger on them on my brakes because I've got Mugura MT5. It's very very strong. Modulation is not fantastic. But the power is is immense. Really, really good. I really can't follow that at all. This bit was really fun.
this build probably my favourite bit in all shows, a little bit thinner. Where you get a nice little downward slope here. It takes you to a nice little turn, which takes you through a little bridge kind of thing where you've got, where you've got handrails to go through. Now I've got 800mm bars, so that is pretty tight to get through this. It's doable, it's doable. We should be careful. One thing I would like to hear is, what is your feedback on the helmet cam rather than the stem cam? Because when it's on the stem, it's very rigid, it's, it's lower down, I think you can maybe see a little bit more. When it's on the helmet, it goes where I look, which I think is not quite as stable at times, but I think it's a bit more natural because you can kind of see how my head moves, you can see when I look around. Again, coming out of this, uh, it's lovely. I would do this, I would like to ride this a lot more than, than I have. I've only done it once in the winter, I'd love to do it in the summer, I think it would be an awesome ride, especially if you go the right way. That was lovely, that. Right, so at the moment we're still on the right track anyway. We are going the right direction for the Boogie Bush, which is where we want it to be. and windy and flowy. One of my favourite things biking is flowy trails. I've never actually done a blue or a green trail but I've been told that I would absolutely love them since I love the flowy trails. I've only ever really done reds and blacks. My first ever trail I did was a Kielder and I'd only been riding for a few months. I was convinced to go to the top of Deadwater which is the top of a radar tower, right at the top of Kielder. And you've got a trail called Skelly's Riggin. Now as a new rider it didn't look too bad. I was told it was a severe black and that it would be good fun. That's all I knew. So I hit that as you do. I just went for it. I soon found myself going 37 miles an hour down Skelly's Riggin. Now if you don't know what Skelly's Riggin is or you haven't been, it's well worth a ride, really really good. <laughs> but it's, it's almost like a road that's just boulders all the way down, there's like long grass all over it. So you're basically bombing down, just holding on. With me being a brand new rider at the time, I think the only thing that kept me on the bike was A, luck, B, my weight, and C, the fact that I've got a very, very capable bike. Now, I did cook my back brake, I've actually got scorch marks on the disc now. So, I held my brake trying to slow it down. And at this time I was doing maybe about 30 miles an hour. So I thought I'd hold my brake to try and slow down. Because I dragged it, <laughs> it just got hotter and hotter and hotter. The brake lever was actually getting warm. Um, the reservoir on the brake lever, the brake disc was steaming. Um, at the very bottom, what I did is I, I poured some water on to see what it would do. Obviously, you shouldn't do that on hot metal because it can make it brittle. But I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go just steam, it was pretty much glowing when I got to the bottom, you could see the scorch marks, it was, it was definitely lighting up. So that was my first ever trail I ever did, um, safe to say it was fun, terrifying, and I might have shit my pants a little bit. But all in all it was good fun, it was something I learned, later on that day we did go through some other trails, now as you can see it doesn't always go to plan as of what's happened on the video. <laughs> so if you look ahead, you can see what looks like a pillar coming out of the ground. That is actually the Bloody Bush Stone. So it's there to commemorate a battle, I believe. Hi. So 
there. The, I mean, the views are fantastic. You, I can't really state that enough how nice the views are. Worth. So, yeah, that was the Scottish border. So, obviously, we're going to see Scotland on one side and England on the other. Now, we're in Newcastleton. So, we've, we are now aware that we're taking the wrong turn, not knowing how long this is meant to be. That's a good squeaky break. There's a this is a cross borders trail. So we've ended up going north across the border through the castle. We'll have a loop around by a keel there. So I've just mentioned the pedals right there, that's one thing I must say about an e-bike. Great to ride, but your bottom bracket and your cranks are lower. So you have a lot more pedal strikes and bottom bracket hits. That's where the GoPro battery died. So the rest of the trip, it was it was tough. I do need to thank the guys that were with me, Kevin Mark, brilliant, fantastic support. You guys are a lot fitter than me. You, you did awesome. Kev got to the literally a couple hundred meters away from the car park when his battery died. I was about three miles away when my battery died. So I had to try and pedal a 25 kilo bike three miles uphill. That was super tough. I had Mark come back to find me because that was taking a lot longer. See, we've lost water. We've lost daylight, we've lost food, lost battery, and really, we were exhausted. We were at the point where it was critical to get home, because the temperature was so low. It, it dropped colder than minus five, it got colder and colder. We were obviously soaking. I'll be honest, it was one of the hardest rides I've ever done. But, I'm very glad I did it, because I don't think me before biking would have done something like this. It's nice to look back on the footage now, it's a shame that I don't have more. I've struggled with my mental health for a little while now and mountain biking has been a huge thing that's helped with that. One is the social side and the exercise. The other thing is it gives me something to focus on. Like when I'm having a bad day, I can go clean the bike. Right guys, well thank you very much for joining me today. It's great to look back and say that I've conquered that, I've accomplished something. It was super hard, but no, we got there, we got there. It had all the right makings of a beautiful ride where you can literally ride, enjoy the views, enjoy the downhills. Just make sure if you do go on the bloody bush trail, take the right bloody turn. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. Obviously, I'm EMTB Ryan. Just call me Ryan. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, get them to subscribe too. Thanks very much for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you on the trails. <laughs>